Muse for you, awesome websites without code. Hey, what's up, Musers? John with Muse for you, here to help you build awesome websites without code. And in this quick tip, we're going to go over a website called mixfont.com. Uh, this is a really useful website if you're trying to decide what fonts you want to use for your own website. So I have the website here. It's called yeah, mixfont.com. I'll leave a link in the description area below. And here we can see it says uh, 600 pairings of fonts, uh, 1,000 unique fonts, and 132 languages. And if you scroll down, it says find the perfect font for your next project. Uh, so I've been working with typography quite a bit. So I do know that uh, selecting the right font for your site can really set the tone and the, the design for your website. So this is a really useful site. Um, here we can see it says start the generator. So if I click here, start the generator, uh, it gives me a pairing of two different fonts. So here we have Ubuntu and Cameron. Cameron. Um, and if I click on the right lower hand corner here, and I, it's the reload symbol, if I click the reload symbol, it gives me another pairing. So we have Sansi 1 with Kata 1. So it has an image behind it and it has the fonts to give you an idea of what it would look like on your website. So if I click refresh, here we have Paliquin with Archivo Black. And most of these fonts are Google uh, web fonts, which are Edge web fonts in Adobe Muse. Some fonts you might not be able to find right in Adobe Muse, uh, but you can search for it online and then using a program like Font Squirrel, and I'll leave a link in the description area below, um, you can convert it to a web font and then place it into Adobe, <laughs> into Adobe Muse as a self-hosted web font. Um, I do have a video on that. I'm not going to get too much into that, into self-hosted web fonts at the moment because that would take uh, a bit of time. Um, so yeah, you can just hit refresh and um, you know, until you find the fonts that you like and then use them in Adobe Muse. Um, so I'll hit refresh a few more times. Here we have Jotty One with Creon, uh, Cherry Cream Soda with a Able, and things like that. So some of these fonts are a little bit out there. They do have a section called Top Pairings, which are tried and tested font pairings. So if I go back to the homepage, mixfont.com, and I click on Top Pairings here in the upper right hand corner, and it's right below the start the generator as well. Here it says start the generator or view the top pairings. So if I click on view the top pairings, we have a few pairings that have been upvoted and you know tried and tested and a lot of people like these pairings. Um, so here, let's say I was gonna go with, so I like this Vesper Libre here with Linden Hill. So let's see if we can find both those web fonts in Adobe Muse. So I'll go into Adobe Muse, and here I have a, a header and some placeholder text um, or lorem ipsum text. So the fonts we have are yeah Vesper Libre and Linden Hill. So I'll go into Muse. First, I'll select the header because the header is going to be Vesper Libre. And I'll go into the text panel here to the left, and I'll click on Web Fonts. And here we can see it says Add Web Fonts. And you can also add web fonts by going to File, Add, Remove web, web Fonts. So I'll just click there. And then I'm gonna type in Vesper. Right up here in the search option, I'll type in Vesper. So right away I can see that it's not a type kit or edge web font, so I'm gonna go ahead and skip this pairing. Um, if you really wanted to use that pairing, you could just do a quick Google search for Vesper Libre. I think that's what it was called, Vesper, yeah, Vesper Libre and then install it as a self-hosted fonts if all the permissions are there and everything. And you'll also want to make sure that you have permission to convert it to web font. Sometimes different fonts have different license agreements and things like that. So um, I'll go ahead and try this one, uh, Yaseva 1 with uh, Crimson Text. So let's go back into Muse and I'll just type in Yaseva. So here we can see it's an edge web font. So here we have the one symbol. Typekit doesn't have the Yaseva font, so I'll just install it as an Edgeweb font. So I'll click, I'll make sure that the check mark is blue, meaning it's selected, and I'll click OK. All right, so now it's installed into Adobe Muse. So I'll go to the text panel and I'll type in Yaseva, Yaseva, and then I have Yaseva 1. There it is. And the 
Next text is crimson text. So I'm pretty sure I might already have this one. So I'll select the paragraph text and I'll go into the text panel, type in crimson. I have crimson Roman. So I'm gonna see if I just have the regular crimson. Crim yeah, crimson. So I'll go to add web fonts. I'll type in crimson and we have crimson text and we have crimson as a type kit. So I'll go ahead and install the type kit font. Make sure the check mark is blue. Click OK. All right, so I'll go back into the text panel, type in crimson. So I guess we just have crimson Roman for crimson. So I'll just click there, and then we have the crimson text. So it looks the same as crimson. So I'm just going to go ahead and say crimson Roman is crimson. So these are things, you know, if the font looks like it's way off from what mixed font looks like, then you might want to search for a different font. Um, so I'll just here I'll just play with the uh, text panel just to format the text a bit. So I'll make the text 16 or yeah I'll say 16 pixels, and we'll give it a bit more line height. So right now it's at 120 percent. So I'll say 150 percent, and it just gives a little bit more spacing um, within the paragraph here. And for the header I'll give it a little bit more letter spacing. So I'll go here, or it's called tracking as well, and I'll say. I'll say three pixels for the, uh, or four, four pixels for the uh, letter spacing in the header. So I'll go ahead and preview in Adobe Muse. And there we have the header with the text. I might throw in the font smoother uh, just to make the font a little bit smoother. Hence font smoother. <laughs> and yeah, and the font smoother only works with web fonts. That's another thing I want to mention. You always want to use web fonts. System fonts are just text as images and search engines and browsers can't read text within images so if you are trying to rank in the search engines um, you do not want to use system fonts you always want to use web fonts because the search it's actually text within the code so search engines can say hey this website or this page is about you know this particular topic so if someone is searching for that topic you're more likely to show up in the search engines especially if you're targeting a local area and not the entire world you know, these are just some best practices. Always use web fonts and not system fonts. System fonts are basically images, text within uh, an image. Okay, so I'm gonna bring in the font smoother and there we go. And there we go. So we have a nice uh, page with some text. Um, the pairing was from mixfont.com. Uh, really simple, you know, they have top pairings and if you wanna just experiment, just start the generator and start going through fonts. And then in Adobe Muse, you can install it, install it as a type kit font or an edge web font by going to file, add remove web fonts, or in the text panel, just click on the web font section and then click add web fonts. Um, if you don't find the font and you are looking for it online and then want to convert it via font squirrel or another uh, web font program, just make sure that uh, that particular font that you know, in the license agreement, it doesn't say anything like, you know, you can't use it as a web font and things like that. Muse actually makes sure that you click a button that says, you know, um, this font has been licensed to be able to use as a web font and things like that. So uh, just a little side note there. Um, but other than that, um, it's a great program, a great website, mixfont.com, um, to really kind of inspire you to use some creative and interesting fonts in your website. Um, I have been getting into typography. It's a lot of fun. Um, because it can make a real big difference on how your website looks visually and having the fonts, you know, the spacing correct um, makes it easier for users to read and yeah, having the right font makes it easier for users to read as well. Um, so that's it for this video. Again, I do this to help you build awesome websites without code. If you like this video tutorial, you can subscribe below. Also in the show more section below are links to other resources and links to meetsforyoushop.com. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video tutorial. Thank you. News for you, awesome websites without code.